Hi there, this is Miss Caitlin from the FIBO Kids Art Academy. Today we're going to be doing our third day in cartoon camp where we're going to draw a cartoon figure as well as learn cartoon expressions. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here's the little fellow we're going to be making today. So with cartoon figures, um, they're very expressive and they're made out of shapes. They don't have to be super stiff and they certainly don't have to have very straight edges either. Our little guy, just to make it easy, I did make his legs very straight, but in a lot of cartoons, uh, the poses can be very dynamic and really, really fun. So before we even begin on our project, I want to talk about expressions, and they're very, very important when it comes to making cartoons. Now with cartoons, uh, you probably know, because you've probably seen them, um, the expressions on a character's face uh, really tell you about what they're feeling and kind of helps draw attention to something maybe happening in a scene. They also can be really funny and used for comedy. I'm sure you don't need me to tell you that, and you can also know that your expressions just in day-to-day -day life do the same things. So for expressions, let's just do a quick exercise together before we dive into the practice drawing on our project. So what I want you to do is just take out a piece of paper and take out a pencil and let's just go over a couple expressions. Now again, I'm going to be using a Sharpie just so that you can see, but still use a pencil. I want you to draw a circle somewhere on your paper doesn't have to be perfect. Now I want you to think about what makes a person look happy. Is it a frown on their face? Definitely not. So you would probably draw a face that looks like this if the person is happy, right? But how can we make that look even more exaggerated like a cartoon? Well, what we could do, draw another circle and this time we're going to practice another expression. It's going to be happy still, but why don't we draw the eyes really big? Maybe we draw the pupils on the inside here. Now I want you to smile really big, as big as you can. Do you feel maybe your eyebrows go high above your eyes if you're really, really happy and you're excited? Now, if we really want to show somebody that's super happy and having a lot of fun, we might want to draw them with their mouth open and really big. You could also draw them maybe smiling with their teeth, or maybe they're so happy that you can just see them opening their mouth and they're like super happy to be there. Now, as well, when you smile, this might be kind of hard to notice on yourself, but when you smile, your eyes kind of squint a little bit because your cheeks are being pushed up with that muscle and it causes your eyes to just ever so slightly close and squint. So you can draw the cheeks or draw the eyes slightly squinting. Another way to draw this expression would to be to draw the eyes like this, where you start with two horizontal lines, do rainbows on top, And you can draw a smile. Something like that, right? As well, if you're going to draw somebody who's angry, I want you to practice your angry face. Make your face as angry as possible. You might think to draw somebody with a little frown and their eyebrows pointing downwards like this. But how can we make that more exaggerated? You might instead Try an expression like so. Maybe your eyes start with those horizontal lines. We do a U shape underneath. Draw the eyes on the inside. Then you really draw those eyebrows super angry. Maybe you even show the part where the eyebrows are being pushed together. Draw a really big frown. You can even draw the parts of the mouth, the muscle that is being put into that frown. Let's do one more. Let's practice a sad expression. So when you're sad, you probably think to draw somebody like this. Their eyebrows are pointing kind of like so. And they also have a frown on their face. But we could go even further. We can make that really exaggerated. So maybe we draw the person. I actually really like to use cute eyes for this part. 
We draw their eyes really, really shiny because when you are sad and upset, your eyes are very, very reflective and very, very shiny. Maybe we draw some tears in their eyes, draw a really big frown, and maybe you could even draw the tears kind of coming off of them, like they're really upset. You could even draw their mouth open and add extra details to really show how sad this person is. So now that we kind of have an understanding of different cartoon expressions, and don't worry, you didn't need to draw all this, but if you did, that's great. Um, let's go ahead and make a practice drawing of a character. Now, go ahead and take out a practice paper. We're going to do our project just like all the other ones, where we do a practice drawing first, then a final draw, and then we'll color. So for a practice draw and for the rest of our project, your practice drawing paper, you're going to want this on any just scratch piece of paper, any paper you want to draw on to just practice. Your final paper should be a thick piece of paper. We are going to do a bit of watercolor, or at least I am, so it's important that my paper is going to be able to handle that. Now, we're not going to do this now, but when we do get to coloring, I'm going to be using watercolors, markers, and a little bit of color pencil, but you can use whatever you like. For our practice draw and our final draw, make sure you have a pencil and eraser. I'm just going to be using a Sharpie to show you so you can see all of the lines. So let's go ahead and begin. Turn your paper vertical up and down, and we are going to begin with a circle for the head of our cartoon character here that we're going to make the body of. You can make it pretty big. You don't want it too big. Maybe like a medium-sized circle towards the top. And again, it's okay if it's not perfect. Now we're going to go ahead and turn this into a much more interesting face. We're going to add like a little cheek off to the side here. You might not be able to see it well because the mustache of this cat is hanging out there, but there's this cheek that kind of goes around like this. So I want you to go to the edge here, the right side. You're just going to draw a backward C that connects back to that circle. You can go ahead and erase this line right here. If you need to pause at any point, by the way, you can go ahead and do so just to catch up and to go at your own pace comfortably. All right, next we're going to go ahead and draw the basic shape for the body. Now for this, I again think of it kind of like a jelly bean shape, but you could do a circle. You could even do a square shape or a triangle shape. The great thing about cartoon bodies is you can just make them whatever shapes you like. To make the shape that we see on that very grumpy cat is this. You start from underneath the head. You draw a curved line down around and then back up towards the head. You can make this big, thin, uh, short, long, however you like. You can see it's like a jelly bean, it's just not curved on the top. Next, I want you to think about the pose for your arms. Now, is uh, your character being grumpy like mine, like maybe he's being upset about something like, oh my goodness, his back hurts so much, or oh my gosh, he never has enough tuna to eat, who knows? Uh, maybe if you were going to draw a happy character, maybe you can draw their arms high in the air, or if you're drawing a character that looks like they're very strong and determined, maybe you draw their arms and hands on their hips. So kind of decide what you want to do. For a hand, I'm just going to draw a simple circle. I'm actually starting with the hand instead of the arm first. Then I'm going to draw two curved lines from the body over to the hand to kind of make this curved arm shape. I do want the other hand to be on the hip, so I'm going to draw a circle that's kind of over here on the hip. Do the same thing and draw two curved lines over to it. Next, I'm going to go ahead and do the legs. Now your legs could be jumping for joy, so maybe they're like going in two different directions. Maybe yours is, uh, your character is just standing. Whatever the case, you can start from here, draw a line down, go ahead and draw another line to make the front of that leg, and then decide where you want the other leg to be. I'm going to draw my other leg right here. That's going to be two more straight lines down. Then you can draw the feet. You can really draw the feet however you like. I'm going to do two curved lines for the front, straight line in the back, 
and then a curved line for the bottom of the feet to make little paws. You could do the same thing if you want to, or you could also do circles. It's your cartoon character. So here we have kind of the basic structure of the body. So let's go ahead and practice turning this into maybe the character we want it to be. We won't add all the clothes and all the itty bitty little details, but let's definitely figure out, you know, the expression and kind of what we want it to look like, get a general idea of it. So for me, I'm going to be making the cat from the example, but maybe you want to do something else. You could do a dog, you could do a bear, a bird, really whatever you want. You could even do a person. Now, regardless of what animal or you know human being you want to draw, we need to figure out what the expression is going to be. For me, I'm going to have this very kind of grumpy or angry expression, but you could choose to do a different one if you want, and you can kind of design it on your own. It's your chance to get creative for this part. For me, because I know I want sort of that grumpy or angry expression, I'm going to draw two horizontal lines for the tops of the eye. I'm going to draw a U shape underneath. This is just going to give that look of like, it's really grumpy, maybe a little tired. Then I'm going to draw another U shape on the inside to show the colored part of the eye. And then I'm going to make some pretty thick eyebrows for him, uh, for his expression to be just a little more exaggerated. For me, I'm just making two rectangles. So I'm drawing a diagonal line, two diagonal lines, and then connecting. Now I know I want him to be a cat, so I'm going to draw a cat's nose, which is just going to be a triangle. And you could draw a normal cat's mouth if you want to. Uh, but I'm going to draw a little mustache because I know I want him to have one. I think that looks pretty fun. To do a mustache, if that's something you want to do too, I'm starting from one side of the cat's nose over here. I'm drawing a curved line down and out, kind of like a wave. Then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start from this part of the mustache. I'm going to do a curved line down and up that touches the nose. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Pretty funny, right? Now, of course, because I know he's going to be a cat, I need cat ears. So I'm going to go to the top of his head. I'm going to draw two tall mountain shapes for cat ears. I'm even going to draw the insides. I do want his ears to kind of be facing this way because that's kind of how he's facing. So that's why I put the inside parts facing that direction. Of course, he'll need a tail eventually, so I'll just draw in a tail now. All right, so figure out kind of the expression that you want to do. Practice it a couple times, maybe. And then once you're ready, we're actually going to go ahead and move on to the final draw. That's where we're going to do all the fancy work and add in more details, clothes, uh, other expressions, maybe even accessories. So let's go ahead and set our practice drawing aside and take out the paper for our final draw. So remember, if you're going to do watercolor like me, you're going to want this to be a thick piece of paper or just something can, that can withstand the watercolor. Now for your final draw, you again are going to be using a pencil and eraser. I'm just using a Sharpie so that you can see. Turn your paper vertical up and down and let's begin again. So we're going to draw all those basic shapes of your pose that you did once more. And then I'll talk us through how to add accessories and sort of developing your character for your figure. So we started off with that circle for the head. And we added a cheek to one side. Remember for the final draw, I'm always going to go a little faster because you already saw me do these things before. Don't forget to erase this part of your head that's going through your cheek. From here, go ahead and make the body how you like. It can be the jelly bean shape. It can be whatever shape that you've decided to do in your practice draw. Next, let's go ahead and draw our arms in the pose that we wanted. I'm going to do mine again in kind of that grumpy arm shape 
kind of show that he is maybe complaining about something. Then I'm going to draw those curved lines for the arms. Again, I'm just having a lot of fun with it. I'm not being super precise. His arms, if you want sort of a comparison, it, to me they remind me of macaroni. So if that helps you place them and draw them. Think of it that way. Next are the legs. So mine uh, are going to be just straight down, but maybe yours that you decided to do like jumping. Maybe he has one leg out and one leg back here. Go ahead and draw in your legs. I'm going to draw two straight lines down and then two more straight lines down. And then I will draw my feet. So that's two curved lines, two straight lines in the back, then connect. And then you can start adding in the details for your expression and details that make your character your character. For me again, I'm going to make him grumpy. So I'm giving him his grumpy eyes again. Maybe for you that's a different expression. Maybe it's a happy one. Maybe it's a sad one. Maybe it's a determined expression, kind of like Batman that we learned about earlier. Or maybe a curious expression like we learned with Totoro. I'm going to go ahead and draw the nose. His mustache. As well as his ears. I'm going to add the inside parts of the ear, and then I'll make the tail. All right, so go ahead and finish up any of those little details that are going to help with your character, who they are, and their expression. And then I want us to think about the clothes. Now, I want my cat, I think, to be a little bit of a fancy cat. He does look quite dignified, especially with this mustache. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give him a little top hat. Now, the great thing about cartoon figures and cartoon characters is the clothing and the accessories they wear and that they have don't have to, I guess, can, they don't have to abide by the laws of physics. So what does that mean? You know how a top hat would normally sit on your head? Well, I think I want my top hat to be floating above his head just for fun. I can add a little detail for that there. So that's what I mean. You could even draw a bow on the top of your character's head that's floating. It does not have to touch their head in the slightest. As for clothes, you can really have a lot of fun with that as well. I think I want him to have a little bow tie. Maybe he's wearing a fancy vest, so I'm going to draw a V shape. And then I'll draw a W shape on the bottom to show the bottom of his vest. Then maybe he is just wearing the vest, that's his belly. And if that's the case, I could erase this part right here because that's his leg. And you can just see the continuing leg from the rest of the body. You could, of course, give your cartoon character, especially if they're an animal, pants or a skirt still. Um, it's pretty normal in cartoons for animals to just be wearing a shirt. All right. Well, I'm going to draw some other details on his vest here. Those are just two straight lines down. And then I could also add details to maybe like his feet to show the paws. And you could add in any other further details that you would want to do. You could even start to think about maybe what you want to do in your background. Now again, I'm going to do no background. I'm just going to maybe add a shadow on the bottom later once we get to coloring, but you can feel free to add something. Think about where your cartoon character would be. Just know that you might be taking a little bit longer on the project, which is fine. You can pause the video and just add what you want to. Now once you're all done with your final draw, I want you to outline everything with a permanent marker or a Sharpie. Now what's important is that you don't outline any of the stuff that's going through like your clothing or other parts of your cartoon character. So for example, remember the cheek? We didn't want that uh, line there from the circle, so we erased it. For me, I erased this part of the body that was going through the leg. So think about what parts you need to erase and what parts you need to keep. And I will show you a comparison 
kind of of what your picture, or at least what my picture looks like with those lines completely erased and outlined. So go ahead and outline all of your pencil lines that you wanna keep. And then we will start on coloring. So go ahead and pause the video if you need to. All right, so if you are resuming the video, I'm assuming you're ready for coloring. So we are gonna go ahead and begin. I'm gonna go ahead and set my Sharpie aside. Now, the background does take a little while to color in. It's like this entire area here, right? So I'm actually not gonna cover um, filling in the background right now. Instead, what I want us to do first is focus in on our character because we're gonna fill that in with mostly watercolor right now. Now, if you don't have watercolor, that's okay. Maybe you can use something else. Marker will do just fine as well as color pencil. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to start with watercolor and do kind of a base layer or a wash to sort of fill in big areas. I'll add details and more you know, texture to stuff later. So with my watercolors, it might also be helpful for you to have a tray or maybe a paper, not a paper plate, excuse me, a plastic plate of some kind to help you mix your watercolor. If you also just have another paint palette that you can use, highly recommend that as well. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose a color for the main parts of my cat's fur. So I think I want to do a sort of like an orange tabby cat. So I'm gonna get my brush nice and wet. I'm gonna put some water on my palette here just to make my colors light. And then of course, I'm gonna take a light orange. I'm gonna mix that up a little bit. I might add in just like the teeny tiniest bit of brown just to sort of make that a more neutral color. There we go. So now I'm just gonna make a bunch of this color, a whole lot of it. Think about what colors you wanna do as well. Remember, it's a cartoon character, so it does not have to be realistic at all. You could do a pink animal. You could do a person with a blue skin. You could do a cat with rainbow fur. It's really up to you. All right, I'm gonna add just a little bit more of that orange. All right, and I think this is good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in my cat's fur with this color. Now I'm using a medium sized brush. If you have big areas that you can color in or maybe small areas that are hard to reach, you can switch up the brush that you're using, but this one will do fine for me. If you're trying to get into little corners, I highly recommend you stand your brush straight up and down on your paper. Then you'll be able to use the edge of the brush to get into those tiny spaces. Now it's important that we are just trying to get a nice layer down. We don't want this to be too wet. You can see like this part is already starting to dry really fast because I'm not really putting down a lot of water. You need to be really careful into these teeny little areas. Add a little more color there just to even it out and bring it down into the cheek. 